subtitles for my accent as well. That's okay. I'll try to slow down and speak quietly until I get angry and then I won't. So. Okay, any questions? Is there a rolling mic? Yeah. Yeah, I've got a mic here. Hold your hand up if you've got a question you want to ask. First of all, I want to thank actually Trevor and Jackie for organizing this. I think it was a, a great event. Look, look, look behind, look at the standing room only there. Look at that. that those people stood for, <laughs> for the whole film, poor people. But anyway, that, that shows the kind of interest. I think there was a huge hunger for, for this kind of information and for this kind of film. And uh, I think people in, in this area knew the truth but knew it wasn't being told. And I hope I've tried, I've tried to tell the truth and I hope it succeeded in some way. So, I want to hear your opinion now whether you think I've succeeded or not. I want to know what the yeah. <laughs> Well, let's see what's in Gasland too. After the film was finished, um, that's for part two. Yeah, well, actually, you know, it's a, it's on YouTube. It's there. Um, <clears throat> that was a very, very interesting day. I mean, can you hear me? Yeah. That was a very interesting day. That millionaire, millionaires, in fact, even billionaires from millionaires or billionaires from Manhattan would come to Dimmock to meet one person. You know, who's claiming his water is polluted. And I said to Susan Sarandon, the EPA says the water's clean, the DEP says the water's clean. Why are you here supporting this this one percent when there's ninety nine percent of the people? You know, we hear a lot about ninety nine percent, the one percent that occupy this, occupy that. Well, occupy this, Susan Sarandon. You're here representing one percent when the actual ninety nine percent of the people are in this theater tonight, and they know the truth. And I said to her, Why are you doing that when the scientists say the water is not contaminated? She says. I can see that the water is contaminated. And I was thinking, wow, she's a great actress. She's got X-ray eyes. You know, you know but, but that, you know, that's what you're dealing with. Um, so that's why it wasn't included. I mean, up until that, up until that day, I thought that environmentalists liked immigrants. But as you, as you remember, uh, one, of, one of the environmentalists told me to go back to Ireland, but they won't have me either, so we're stuck with it. But I want to do a deal with the environmentalists who hate America. And but let's face it, it's not that they hate, they hate business, they hate capitalism, they hate fossil fuels, but they only hate one particular kind of fossil fuels. They hate American fossil fuels. They don't mind importing oil from Saudi Arabia or Venezuela or China or wherever it's coming from. They hate American fossil fuels, and above all, they hate America. I'll do a deal with them. They leave and hand over their American passport, and I'll take it. Please. Please. Set up a special scheme for all the people who hate America in the world. You leave and give it to people who love, your pa who love America. Sounds like a good deal to me. So, any other questions? Yes, sir. You uh, touched briefly in the movie about uh, the situation with following the money in Europe, or Eastern Europe, I should say. Uh, as with everything, follow the money. Have you looked into where the money trail leads with the anti-fracking? Yeah, I mean, I have no evidence that any money is coming from Eastern Europe. I have no evidence that any money is coming from Saudi Arabia. But they would be crazy not to. They stand to lose trillions of dollars if you guys get the gas out of the ground. Trillions of dollars. Like it's no, that's not a, you, you know, that sounds like, a, I sound like, you know what children, child used to say, trillions and zillions of dollars. They, try, they stand to lose trillions and zillions of dollars uh, 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 if you guys are successful in getting gas out of the ground. So they would be crazy not to be funding the anti-fracking movement. From a business point of view, it's the only way that you go ahead. So 
I have no evidence of that. But why do you need, you don't need <coughs> gas problems money when you've got the, the grandsons and sons of billionaires to fund the anti-fracking movement here in America. You have, you have enemies foreign, but you also have enemies domestic. And you know, it's a funny thing, I, I'm new to America, but I've noticed you do strange things in this country. You have people who work really, really hard and become millionaires and billionaires, and then they have children or grandchildren who then use that money to overturn everything that that parent felt strongly about. <laughs> You know, the Rockefellers and the Ford Motor Company, you know, and, and you know, and another thing you do is you, you pay $100,000 or $200,000 to send your kid to college so they can home and tell you you're evil. <laughs> Some people are laughing a bit too hard there because they, they recognize those children, yes, I know, I know. So, it's, it's, it's a funny, great country you have here, but you, have, you do do some funny things. So, yes, yes, this, you know, it's, I, I have no evidence, but they'd be mad, the foreigners would be mad not to try and undermine fracking here, but you've got plenty of domestic people who want to undermine fracking, millionaires and billionaires in Manhattan, um, environmentalists, or as someone said to me, what's the definition of an environmentalist? Someone who bought, who bought their vacation home last year. <laughs> this lady here. I'm not going to stand here and say bad things about your president. <clears throat> so, 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 so meet me in the pub afterwards. <laughs> but, um, you know, do you trust a politician? Would you put your family's future in a politician's hands? I wouldn't, and I don't mean a democratic politician. Or, I, I, you know, I'd rather put my own family's future in my hands. I, I would remain skeptical about a politician's word. Um, you also have to remember that there's a, a, a 2016 is coming up, and whoever is the most lefty environmental person will probably get the Democratic nomination. You know, that's a big constituency in the primaries, is radical environmentalists. They, they're good at organizing, they're good at getting media. As you people know, right, there's 1% in this community, but boy are they organized. Boy do they know how to use the media. Boy do they know how to use social media, and they know how to get a headline. So if you want to stand for election, if you want to stand for election in the Democratic primary in 2016, you're going to need that environmental base. So the thing you've got to do is go hard against fracking. So maybe President Obama, maybe he's, he's, he's telling the truth when he says it's for us. But you know, in terms of natural gas lifespan in the next 40 years, 2016 comes very quickly. So be careful. <laughs> I don't have a question, but I do have something to say. Um, we sit on one of the richest um, resources in the world right now. We are sending all of that resource to everywhere we give it. We should be able to use that resource here. We should contact your representatives. And whoever, whoever is involved in the state, our state of Pennsylvania, has leased all of our game lands which they received hundreds of millions of dollars just for the sign-up bonus, they're going to receive over 25% royalty <coughs> on that gas. Are any of you people receiving that much? <coughs> so that's the deal they made with the oil companies, and we're getting nothing out of this. So it's not only the, the, the wacko environmentalists that are, are beating this up, it's our elected officials. When did they sign these leases for game lands? Not the private game lands, but the public game lands. Um, it happened over a period of time, but in the last five years, I believe. I thought they were on no surface leases. What difference does it make? They still get royalties, but they no, they are drilling in Forksville. They're drilling on that. They have 84,000 acres there, and they're drilling there. 
Chris? Chris, can you go back? Chris, will you go back? Yeah, hold it nice and How did you become aware of this problem? Wait, this work from the yep, yeah, I got real long range. I can hear you, I just couldn't see you. I'll see you How now. did you become aware of this over in Ireland, all the way over there? And when did you become suspicious of gas land? Well, I, I, I've been living here about four years. Uh, so I was I was living here and I saw it. So it's a very interesting story. Um, I used to be as that gentleman to, to eloquently put it, one of those wacko environmentalists. Um, I, I lived in, in Europe and I was a, a journalist, a liberal European journalist, uh, working for the Financial Times. I went and asked to cover Eastern Europe for the Financial Times. And there was a story, which I'm sure you're all familiar about, about a big corporation coming into a small Romanian town, destroying the environment, polluting the water. You've all heard these stories. And I went to write that story for the Financial Times. I had the story written before I got there, and I got there, and I just started asking the environmentalist questions, and I discovered that the story didn't add up. I asked the company questions, and I discovered their story added up. And when I put these questions to the environmentalists, they said, yeah, I know we didn't tell the truth there, but we're very emotional. And I thought, well, that's a good story. You know, you know she's admitted lying. So I, I ran that story, and, uh, and then I made a documentary about it called Mind Your Own Business. And I thought, that I was going to get a, awarded a prize because I had discovered these environmentalists lying about a situation, an exaggerating situation. I thought my friends in the liberal journalism and in the liberal world were going to give me a Pulitzer and I had my speech already written. And instead, they, they sent me nasty emails and death threats. You know, I make documentaries with my wife, and one of the one of my favorite emails is that uh, there's somebody wrote to us and said, uh, "You you make documentaries with your wife and." Uh, I hope that if you ever have children, that because you love pollution so much, I hope your children are born handicapped. So when I saw what my liberal friends, that was only my liberal friends, that's what the things they were writing. So when I saw that, I, I thought, there's a story here. You know, you know, there's a story, a good story here. These people are misrepresenting the situation, exaggerating, lying. And it doesn't seem to be just isolated in one area. It seems to be a part of a pattern. And if the environmental story was so good, why would you need to lie? You know, if the gas company was coming here and doing bad things, why would you need to exaggerate? Why would you need to lie? And journalists need to start treating big environment. These, these environmental organizations, they're multi-million, multi-billion dollar organizations, some of them. They've got a bigger marketing budget than most oil companies. And we need to start treating big environment the same way we treat big oil or big business. Same <coughs> hard questions. Uh, you know, where's the money from? Where's the... Where's the scientific report? Can you believe that journalists from Germany, Canada, CBS, NBC, all these places came to Dimmock, right? And sat across a table from someone in a baseball cap, and that person said, I've got three types of uranium in my water, two of them weapons grade. <laughs> now, I don't know if anyone here has been to journalism school, right? But you don't have to go to journalism school to have a laugh at that. Right? However, all these highly credited, highly credentialed, award-winning journalists took that story and put it on the TV and on the radio and on the newspapers, without saying to someone, where is the evidence of your three types of uranium, two of them weapons grade? I mean, it's laughable. I mean, if I don't, work, if I don't succeed in this filmmaking, I'm going to come here, bottle the water, and sell it to the Iranian Secret Service. <laughs> Those Iranians are silly. Why don't they come to Dimmock? Instead of, instead of trying to build centrifuges and all that, why don't they come to Dimmock, bottle the uh, uranium, two weapons grade uranium in the water, and take it back and make their nuclear weapons? North Korea, I could, I could make a fortune. You know, but you know, you're laughing. See, when you tell most people that there's someone in Dimmock, Pennsylvania, with three types of uranium in their water, uh, two of them weapons grade, most people laugh. You have to be very highly educated and feel very full of yourself not to laugh at that. And so, unfortunately, that sums up most journalists. You know, it's the lack of common sense, the lack of skepticism is, is it's so mind-boggling that it must be deliberate. It must be part of a narrative, it must be part of an agenda. So that's why I'm not winning any awards. 
the question was how did I end up focusing on gas? And I would like to tell you that it's because I'm such a wonderful journalist and pure of heart and want the truth, which is true, by the way. But actually, it's because I'm stubborn, right? I have a, it's a very dangerous combination of Irish journalists, because you can't tell them to shut up. They take it really personally, right? I took it really personally. I said, you know, sorry, I ran this story. You're a journalist. I ran this story about you. Put it on YouTube. Your answer is to issue a statement, accuse me of misleading, editing, editing accuse me of anything, accuse me of quoting you out of context, issue a statement. You don't use lawyers to shut me down. You know, I, I, I don't like, basically the reason I made the document is because I don't like people to shut up. No one tells me to shut up. So, so, no, so I mean, Josh Fox, you know, reaped what he, what he sowed by trying to censor me. I think it was George Orwell said, journalism is, it, it, journalism is what somebody somewhere doesn't want published, right? And he didn't want this published. He wanted to cover this up. So I thought, let's, let's put a bit of light on this, you know? And uh, let's find out about the weapons grade uranium. Two of them, no, sorry, right. three types of uranium, two of them weapons grade. I don't want this quote. <laughs> you've got you've great water here. On the question of uh, Josh Fox there, what is his, uh, again, follow the money, but what is his motivation? Has there been any investigation as to his motivation for the lying, yeah. the mistruths, and all of that? <laughs> The question was, what, what's Josh Fox's motivation? I mean, I, it, would be, it would be great if Josh Fox was motivated by money. But he's not. It's unfortunate. He's not. He's a true believer. You know, he's a genuine true believer, and that's why he doesn't tell the truth, because he knows the truth is there somewhere. Right? He just can't find it, so he grades the truth, and he grades the truth, and when Craig Sartner tells him, I've got three types of weapons grade uranium, two of them. No, three, sorry, I don't want to misquote him. Because Vera's here filming. It's three types. <laughs> what is it again, Vera? What is it again? I forget. You're the expert. What is it? Three types of uranium, two of them weapons grade. That's right. Sorry. Three types. Of, I mean, I just think it's a great lie. You just keep, <laughs> just keep repeating that to, to environmentalists. They just walk away after a while. So anyway, he's got three types. Of, when Josh, so when Craig Sartre tells Josh Fox he's got three types of uranium, two of them weapons grade, Josh Fox goes, because he does, he genuinely believes that there's something there somewhere. Because in his, because the oil company has to be evil. So he's a true believer, and he is determined. It's it's no noble, noble cause corruption. He's 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 lying for a good end, what he sees. And you know you see that in his in his previous work. He made a movie called Memorial Day, where uh, American soldiers are are rapists and murderers. Uh, you know that he's got a anti-corporate, anti-business, anti-American mindset, uh, anti-fossil fuel, and he's made a documentary to, to get that message out because he, he genuinely believes that. He's not motivated for money. He makes a lot of money, but he's not motivated by money, in my opinion. But I don't know, because I've never had the ability to talk to him for very long. He's running away from me. <laughs> I, must be, I must be more radioactive than the water, I think. Did you find any... Uh Threads or connections with uh, George Soros front groups or funding by Soros, the billionaire? I, I haven't really, you're asking any, any connections with George Soros, but I haven't really looked. But he's, he's funded a lot of environmental groups. He, he funded, funny enough, he funded the environmental group that was opposed to the, the mine in Romania that I first worked on. So he's, he's you know, he's, he's one of the. Romania, originally. No, he's from Hungary. Uh, yeah. But he. he uh, Actually, funny, and that's very interesting. He's from Hungary, and the mine is in a place where Hungary used to own and was taken from them in 1918. So there's a lot of people, a lot of Hungarians don't want the gold to go because they think it belongs to them. So, But no, I haven't investigated that any further. Funny enough, I'm not that interested in where the money's coming from because these people are, are true believers. You know, um, as I say, you have enemies foreign, but you also have enemies domestic. Uh, and, you know, they want to shut American industry down because they, they view it as. as, as as intrinsically evil. If Josh Fox is actually a true believer, why is he not here tonight? This is Ground Zero, supposedly. That's a good question of Josh Fox. Been here? Uh, you see, you, you don't understand, you people. Josh Fox knows what's good for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, you don't understand, you know? And, and it's, 
you know, if he was to come here and try, it, it's not, he's too busy meeting Sean Lennon and Yoko Ono and Mark Ruffalo to try and work out what's best for you guys. So he's busy working out what's best for you guys. When I used to be a lefty, you know, we used to talk about, um, you know, imperialism. You know, how, how imperialism was basically powerful people going to poor places and telling people how to live, how to work, what to do. Uh, you know, and we got rid of that, you know. That doesn't happen anymore, except we've got new imperialists now. New people who come to small communities and tell them, tell, tell you what you can do with your land, what you, can, what you can work at and what you can't work at. What, what you, you know, where you can live actually, what you can do, what kind of house you can build. So that they're new imperialists, they're, you know, they've got, they've got woolly jumpers and hairy faces, you know, and that's just the women. And, <laughs> sorry, that's, <laughs> and, you know, and they're, they're determined to tell you how to live. So I think it's time that you told them what you think of that. And, guys, you need to get on Twitter and you need to get on Facebook and you need to start writing letters to local newspapers and when they don't publish them, put it on Facebook that they didn't publish them, and write to the other newspaper and, and harass the journalists. You know, journalists like stories, the good ones. So tell them your stories. You know? Now, you know, they will twist your stories, some of them, but the good ones won't, and you just gotta keep up with it. But everyone needs to get on Facebook, and everyone needs to get on Twitter, and you know, the left and the environmental movement are, are winning the, war, the Twitter wars, and they're winning the Facebook wars, and there's, there's, there's one percent of them. If everyone here got on Twitter tonight and started writing about fracking, you would you would win the fracking war. The wizard war between face, uh, Frack Nation and Gasland and Frack Nation won on Facebook. I kid you not. Well, I mean, it would be very interesting about about, about Frack about Gasland. If you go on Gasland and post even a question on their Facebook page, you get blocked and deleted right away. So that's another thing. You, a, uh, I, I only realized this after I drifted away from the environmental left. There's a deeply intolerant, you guys know this, there's a deeply intolerant strain to, liberal, to liberalism. That, that, and it's, it's, it's born out of knowing what's best for you guys. And you guys just don't understand what's best for you. So we have to tell you. God bless you. I don't know how you manage all this time without George Fox looking after you. Honestly. This, this lady here. Um, I think I might talk loud enough. You said it, and you said about the politicians. I think one of the things that we all have to understand is that we do elect our officials, and in the most part, our elected officials will listen to us if we talk to them, if we don't attack them. I live in Sacramento County. I live in, um, you know, in, in this area. I know. I've met almost everyone I voted for. I've actually met. I've met my state, my state representatives, my senators, because I've made the effort. You know, a lot of people say these people go to Harrisburg or they go to, you know, to uh, Washington. They don't listen to them it's because we don't talk to them. Our elected officials will listen to us. Their offices are there to listen to us. And yeah, you're right. Use social media. But the reality is, maybe it's just Pennsylvania. New York is an entity unto itself, and I, I know there's people here from New York, and I apologize to you. But, <laughs> <laughs> but in, in Pennsylvania. It's I mean, if you actually talk to your elected officials and their and their offices, they do listen. But you just have to tell them. You have to be more than that. You know, they, they hear from the actors that come in and say, "Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible." Yeah. They don't hear from from you know the, more, the average person that says, yeah. "Hey, you're doing a great job. Keep doing it." The problem yeah. is, is there's a doctor's office between here in Harrisburg and here in Washington that removes their spine. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I think you have to you have to make it. You have to give them the spine back. You have to make it more trouble than it's worth. I, when I went to the Hammer Museum, I sat for an hour and a half at the Hammer. There you go, another example. The Hammer Museum. Do you know who funded the Hammer Museum? Armand Hammer who is the chairman of Standard Oil. And 30 years after he founded the Hammer Museum, they had a forum attacking fracking. Josh Fox, Bill McKibben, and an Australian journalist who hates fracking as well. That was their idea of a, of a forum. Anyway, so I was there, and this, this guy gets up, and the, the crowd was about half this crowd, and he says, nobody knows about fracking in California, but I, I'm an aide for a state representative, and he named the state representative, he says, 
If this crowd came to his office tomorrow, we would, we would support a ban on fracking, because this kind of crowd really gets his attention. And it was half the size of this room. So they do, it's not that they, I don't know, I can't speak for all politicians, they won't act out of, out of the kindness of their heart, but they'll act out of pressure. And you've got to keep the pressure on them. Talk to them, harass them, shout at them. I, this lady says don't shout at them. I, I, I tried that, it doesn't work. Shout at them. You know, you know, I'm Irish. You know, one thing I'll add to that is uh, we're, we're, we're very privileged here in Susquehanna County because we do have some great representatives uh, that are engaged and know the issues that are taking place and going on and you'll, you'll find them out here at events you know this one here they couldn't make because there was uh, you know scheduling conflicts down in Harrisburg but when there's events they're out there and they're engaged with us we're in dialogue with them and being organized like this and informed uh, is is, a, is the way to make a difference uh, you know for ourselves for each other any other questions this lady here. What, what are the ways you're getting uh, this movie out to folks? The question was, what, what way are we getting the movie out? Well, well, it was on TV, which was a big thing. You know, I know not everyone had the channel, but a lot of people had the channel. So it was on TV. Oh, thank you for that. Did I mention that it's been sold out the front in DVD form? <laughs> now, since, since I gave up, since I gave up environmentalism and liberalism, I've become a raging capitalist. Okay? <laughs> So, I want, this is part of my 12-step pro, I, I call myself, I call myself, I'm a recovering European. So this is part of my 12-step program uh, to sort of get out of that Euro toxic European sort of addiction to, to handouts. So, uh, I'm out there selling my property, I, you have to buy it as part of the process of making me an American, making you feel part of your country, hand over your money, I'll accept it, uh, reluctantly, proud, but, so I'm selling DVDs, yes, so, DVDs also organize a screening. Why don't you know? So you know, why doesn't someone? Um, I know an empty house in Dimmock you could use. <laughs> uh, uh, you be careful with the water, though. Apparently, there's two types of uranium in it. So it's not good. But wouldn't well, that be good? Uh, and somewhere have the have the film screened up against the side of a certain house in Dimmock that's empty now. Um, so yes, yeah, so you can have your screenings. Uh, uh, if, if your local school has shown Gasland, I think, in the, uh, uh, to quote a uh, sort of an environmental phrase, in the interest of fairness, you should suggest that uh, Frack Nation is shown at, at the local school as well. Sure. Yes, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have a problem with, with uh, your rights or whatnot if we buy the film and show it at our church or whatever? I think it's a case of ask for forgiveness, not permission, you know. Just don't tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell my wife I said that, please. Yeah, so, you have a green card you're an alien. I'm an alien. Uncle Obama's going to make you a citizen. I doubt it. I doubt it. I'm an alien, on, on a, do, a sort of semi-documented alien. I, I was on a, on a radio show the other day and uh, uh, I started speaking and this anti-fracking activist came on and informed the, the radio host that he was going to uh, phone uh, the immigration services because I was acting outside the bounds of my, uh, my visa and he was going to get me deported. So apparently, uh, speaking your mind and telling the truth is acting outside the, the grounds of your American visa. Well, I, I don't see that written anywhere, and I, I believe you have something called the First Amendment. So I'm going to exercise that uh, for a while. Well, yeah. we'll see. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> a bit longer than that. This, this lady here. Give her the mic. Traitor to Ireland, as an, as an Irishman myself, about third generation American, uh, I never known an Irishman that was a traitor to his country. Yeah, I think she was projecting something from herself onto me. You know, I mean, I don't know. Do you want? I mean, talk about being anti-American. She called she called me anti-American and anti and a traitor to my country. I don't know, like. Do you do you do you support equality for women? Do you support gay rights? You know, if you really support those, and those are sort of semi-American values now. You know, those are you know these are things that all good Americans are supposed to now believe in equality. You know, if you want to fund countries that hang gay people, if you want to fund countries that stone women for adultery, then buy your oil from Saudi Arabia 
tomorrow. Please do. But if you say you're, you have liberal views, if you say you, li you, know, you like equality, then you buy it from Pennsylvania. It just makes sense. It's, it's, it's the most ethical energy in the world, the Pennsylvania gas. You have, the, you have the, the best human rights in the world. You have more amendments than most people have articles in their constitution. You know, most of these countries don't even have constitutions. You know, I, I, here's a slogan for the environmental movement. Buy your oil from Saudi Arabia today, hang a gay tomorrow. Because that's what you're funding. <laughs> that's what you're funding. The murder of, of gay people, the stoning of people for committing adultery. That's the kind of backward looking people. You know, that's, that's the effects of buying your oil and gas from, from Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's backward looking, it is backward looking. When I came here first, I was told that there were these people called progressives who I thought were, loved progress. I arrived here and the progressives, they love windmills and, and, they, and they worship the sun. You know, windmills were b thrown out of Holland 400 years ago, along with most of your relatives probably. And then um, uh, they stopped worshiping the sun 3,000 years ago and they're the ones called the progressives. And you guys are apparently conservatives. That's what yours, you guys are called, you know, conservatives. And you, you want new technology? You're not conservative at all. You're the most progressive people I know. You look forward to the new world, to modernity. You don't look backwards, you know? So, um, you know, and there's another thing about what's, the, you know, oh, conservatives, they're very, very concerned with your bedroom, all this thing, all, they're all obsessed with your bedroom. And I got here, maybe conservatives are con obsessed with bedrooms, but I'll tell you, the liberals, they're in your, every other room in your house, you know? They're telling you what kind of car you can drive, what kind of fridge you can have, how big your house could be, how small it should be, they're in your, your, they're in your dishwasher telling you what kind of detergent, they're even in your light bulbs. Tell you what kind of, you know, so I have a slogan, it's part of my 12-step program, you know, I'm an American, get out of my light bulbs, you know. I, I, I'm going to swear allegiance to the flag and then say, I'm an American, get out of my light bulbs. Uh, I just want to say thank you for uh, bringing this film that is so beautifully done and so articulate and focuses on the things that are important and, you know, being someone who comes from Fort Worth, Texas, where we have the... Barnett Shell, mm -hmm. and I watched Fort Worth turn from a sleepy little town to the most beautifully, economically successful uh, city in a state that has a surplus, whose economy is booming. And it isn't because of anything, but we have supported natural gas and oil and gas. It has not destroyed our drinking water or anything except brought great industry to our state and I think Pennsylvania deserves the same. Well, you know, I, I, I agree with you up until that last line. Pennsylvania doesn't deserve anything. You have to earn it, right? And you have to realize that your biggest rival is not Saudi Arabia or Venezuela. It's Texas, right? <laughs> Or Ohio, look, you know, these, these oil companies and gas companies, the environmentalists are right about one thing, they care about making money and profit. And they want to get the oil and gas out of the ground in the place that's friendliest to them and that's easiest to them. And if you guys start throwing barriers up to them, they're going to go to Texas or Oklahoma or Ohio or, or somewhere else or Wyoming. So, okay, you can have your little moratorium. Oh, you know, it's not a little moratorium. It, you know, these dra there's only so many drilling rigs and they, they go to the easiest place. So, of course, they're going to go to Texas. They're going to go to Wyoming. So that's, that's who your enemy is. I don't mean that enough. But that's, that's who your rival is. You know? Okay, you're lucky you're close to New York, but, you know, Fort Worth will build a pipeline. You know, just be careful uh, if, if your politicians start dragging their feet or imposing penalties. You know, it's... Um, these, the, the environmentalists arrive at one thing, oil companies care about profits and making money, and gas prices are very low. Just be careful not to mess this up, is what I would say, if, if, you, if you really want it here. Since you finished your film, uh, have you come across any other points that you wish you had been able to include? Um, that's a good question. Um, 
No, I think. Um, no, I think. I think well, the, the environmentalists are like those toys you have at the fairground. You know, something pops up and you hit it. Breast cancer. You hit it on the head, and then something they pop up with something else. So there's a new thing now. The radioactive thing. Apparently, it's all radioactive. Not, not, uh, not uranium. It's a new type of radioactive nonsense they're talking about. So that, listen, environmentalists come up with this. You couldn't, you'll never finish making a documentary about fracking because environmentalists will, will come up with a more ludicrous story tomorrow than, you, than they came up with today. Remember in the 70s, this thing, being in love means never having to say you're sorry. Well, being an environmentalist means never having to say you're sorry. You know, so you can scare the bejesus out of someone about breast cancer or something else. And when that's proven wrong, you don't say sorry, no, there's no consequences, you just move on. So I want to just bring some accountability to the environmental movement. I want to put the same spotlight on them. If a CEO of an oil or gas company uh, lies and is found to have lied, he goes to jail or he goes bankrupt or his company goes bankrupt. If an environmental organization lies, they raise more money. And no one, no one, no one, uh, no journalist pulls them up on it. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I think this film is about fracking, but it's also about journalism. You know, how journalists went, and I, I just, I, sorry, I just have to keep repeating this. How journalists went to a little, town, a little house here and sat opposite on a table in a very nice little house, a quaint little house, and they saw, I talked to a guy in a baseball cap who told him he's got three types of uranium in his water, two of them weapons grade. And then they reported it. It's like, journalists are not stenographers. We actually, when, you know, it's a great privilege to be a journalist. I love it. It means I can go now and ask this gentleman here, how much money do you make? How big is your house? Uh, and he may not tell me, but I, have, I can go and ask him because I'm a journalist. It's, it's wonderful. It's great when you're nosy, which I am. But, you know, with that, as, as Superman or Spider-Man knows, with power comes responsibility. So when this gentleman tells me that he's got three types of uranium in his water, two of them weapons, great. It's, it's actually I have a responsibility to ask for the scientific evidence to back that up. And if I don't, I'm not really a journalist, I'm a stenographer. So you need to pull up journalists as well and keep the pressure on them. Quick question, I'll hold the mic for you. Quick question. Uh, yes, uh, Phelan. Your, your own country, can you hear me? Your own country, Ireland, has passed a moratorium. They don't want fracking. Why haven't you been able to convince Ireland? And you come here to the United States to convince Americans. Why are you telling us what to do here and want us to do fracking when your own country, you can't convince? I am not telling you what to do, okay? You are free people in a free country. And you can tell me what to do, by the way. And, uh, and many people have in the past. Um, not all the predictable. And why did uh, Ireland and, pass and, the and moratorium? So, so please tell me what to do. This is what, this is what a Q&A is for, right? So there's, if you have any problems with this film, tell me about them. And if you have any serious problems, tell me, tell me about them in the pub afterwards, you know? I mean, I'm open to questions. I don't block people from Facebook. This is one thing. We don't, we have a policy. We even let Vera speak of our Facebook page. Uh, have you seen some of the vile language that she's involved in? I mean, we, 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 have, a, we, have, you know, we have an exception that if someone uses profane language, really vile language, we would block them. But, but let me tell you, I'm from Ireland, and that, that definition of, of, of vile language is pretty loose in Ireland, you know? And uh, so we don't block people. So people can come on our Facebook and tell us what to do, you know? And people should go on social media and tell us what to do. So I'm, I'm not telling you people what to do, but I'm telling you, you know, you have a problem, and you, and you don't need me to tell you that either. But I just thought, I'm, telling, I'm trying to tell the truth. And the truth is not somewhere in between, right? This, I heard this at another screening line. So suppose they say that, and you say that, and the truth is somewhere in between. Nonsense, right? There is no truth in between on weapons grade uranium and dinner. You either have it or you don't, right? You know, and I don't think you have weapons grade uranium. Okay, so you know we need to get away from this idea, this journalistic idea that he said that and she said that. No, you're journalist. You're intelligent. Go and investigate. Ask for the scientific report from the guy in the baseball cap <laughs> with the dodgy facial hair. He tells me he's the weapons. Sorry, I'm the wandering. This lady. Here. I, I just wanted to thank. Oh no, you. I don't want to speak here from her. <laughs> I want to thank you. I don't feel you told us to do anything. 
we gave you our money because we wanted you to find answers that we were unable to get. We asked you to investigate this for us. That's, that's a very good point, actually. So thank you. Many, many executive positions are here. Yes, I can, you're my bosses. You're my bosses. You know, you paid me to do this. You know? So, you can tell me what to do. I won't, I won't do it though, but you can try. <laughs> I, was, I didn't put that, you didn't read that bit in the contract. It's a. And HBO paid Josh Fox. Who knows who paid Josh Fox? Right, right back here, Kim. Somebody tell me um, the people that left Dimmick because of the contaminated water, why in the world they'd go to New York and Tioga County and buy a new home to them that has a gas lease on it? That's right. So the question was, why would people... Um, the people in Dimmick that left Dimmick because of the contaminated dirty water go to New York and buy another home that has a gas lease already on it? I, I don't know. I suspect, you know, it's because they're liars, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. But I, uh, okay. Oh. You know, I mean, you can call it this, and you can call it that, and maybe the truth in between. But you know, and, and I, I know that to use the word liar is a very strong statement. But you know, they are liars. These are not, these are not stupid people, although they do, do a good job of looking like it. But you know, they lied. They did lie, and we need, you know, you, you know, I know Americans are very polite. It's one of your biggest. Um, well, no, it's your biggest strength and your biggest weakness. You know? Because you're not allowed to call someone a liar. Well, you know, sorry. You know, where is the scientific evidence of your water being contaminated? You don't have any. How do you know there's uranium in it? You don't know. You're lying. You're making it up. You're scaring people. You know, you know you're destroying people's futures in, in, in Denmark over your lies, over your, over your lucrative lawsuit. So... That's why they went to New York, and that's why they bought a house with a, a gas lease on it, because they lied about the conditions of their water here. And uh, I, I know, and they can sue me for that if they want. And what's their names? Who are you calling a liar? I think everyone here knows who you're talking about. Why don't you say their names? Mm -hmm. Should I say their names? Do you think I should say their names? Oh my God, what if I'm sued? Say, oh, well, why don't you if say... I was the, if I was to name the Southerners as liars, I'd be sued. Oh! Oh my god, I said it. Oh well, I'll have to wait for it. Look, Craig and Judy Sartner have been phoning me for about six months threatening lawsuits, and the lawsuit has, has not arrived. So, we'll wait for the lawsuit. Uh, I'm, I'm well, and, and the first thing I do when I get a lawsuit is I'm going to start a Kickstarter campaign for the legal funds. <laughs> and I think I might get a few supporters. I don't know. Well, we sell the we could sell the uranium water though to Iran. I, actually, you know, I'd love to do that. Is to bottle the Dimmock water, you know, and sell it on eBay. <laughs> First thing I like to say is that the uh, post office that you drove by in the, in the movie—I used to own that from 1973 or four until probably 1985—and I wonder if I can. Get a free DVD for that or something. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not hear I, I, I'm a capitalist? Not a, uh, no, that, that, that's too European, you know. That's, that's like a welfare state. If I give you, if you give me something for free, next thing you'd be. I was in. I was in. Only free healthcare or something. I was in and I had to leave the area and move to Tunkanic because there, everything was falling apart. Uh, farmers were going broke, and I was doing a lot of business with farmers, and so I can see. Amazing things. Now we know Josh wants to do another sequel to his gas plant. We all know that he can't come here anymore because all he's going to find is amazing things like this little hospital that's being built and so many other things. The local school district getting millions of dollars to build more uh, labs and things for their school. Poor, very poor school district. So I don't see how he could come here. Yeah. To do a sequel. Well, you see, I mean, funny, someone asked me about that today, and I said, you know, if you look at, at frack nation, there's actually very little in frack nation about the economic benefit of fracking, which is interesting. Though there was a lot more, and then my wife Anne sent me off on a week's holidays and cut it all out when I was gone. And that's the truth. And, 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 and the reality is, apart from actually, there's a little bit about Ron White over Montrose, you know, just a little bit about that. But 
when you think about it, the economic boom is irrelevant. I know it's not irrelevant to you guys, but money is not important if your land is being poisoned, if your water's been poisoned, if you've got weapons grade uranium in your water. Money could not pay for that, right? So I thought I felt, to quote George Fox, that the economic argument was irrelevant. So I wanted to look at the scientific argument. Is, is this poisoning you? Are people ill? Is it contaminating the water? That's all that matters, you know? And it's not. You know, Lisa Jackson told Congress twice under oath that, that there's not been one case of fracking having contaminated water anywhere in America at any time. There's been 1.3 million wells fracked in America. There's not even a one in a million chance of, of, a, of a water contamination. You have better chance of winning the lottery than you have Although I think that's what some people thought they were going to do when they launched those lawsuits, you know. So, uh, no, that's three questions. Uh, after the second one, after the second one, I start charging on my capitalism rules. But anyway, how about instead of waiting for Josh to beat you all up, why don't you do another documentary that makes him come and beat you up? Wouldn't that make sense? Yeah. Why do we you you, you, you misunderstand. You misunderstand those attitudes. They're too important to be to, to answer questions, and that's that's the attitude. You know, they have a forum where three people who all agree fracking is bad, and they call that a forum. Um, they know what's good for you. They know what's good for your life and your f children and your future, and uh, it doesn't include fracking. And you're just too stupid or too greedy or too naive to realize that, you know? And th that's their attitude. So they, wouldn't, they don't want to talk to you. You're, you're, you're wasting time, you know? That's their attitude. I just happen to think it's, that, that, I mean, something very interesting about America that most people don't realize is you're the only country in the world where people own the mineral rights. You go to Ireland, the state owns the mineral rights. The Crown owns the mineral rights. You go to England, the Crown owns the mineral rights, you know? You want to know why America is exceptional? Maybe that's why America is exceptional, because people are very, very invested in property rights and freedom of, of, of use of their land, of freedom of travel, you know? And that's why, and to answer Vera's earlier question, that's why I came to America, because I can, you know? Because I can. You know, I'd, like, I'd like Vera to go to Saudi Arabia. She wouldn't have got here tonight because she wouldn't be allowed to drive. <laughs> That's a good idea, though. Mm. Ah, no. You know, so th that's 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 why I'm here because I can, and I'm I'm just I'll take a final question because uh, I'm wandering off topic. So final question. This lady here. Do I have a final question? Yes. The truth there is that they are alleging their water is contaminated and that they are involved in huge lawsuits to compensate them for their water being contaminated. The third bit of truth is they have no scientific document that says their water is contaminated. Those are just three bits of evidence, right? I can't judge their water, but every time I ask them for a, a scientific analysis, like you're farmers, you, you send milk off to get analyzed every day. You know, it's not true when your milk is delivered, it's, it's to take a sample. You know, farmers are used, people in this in the country or side are used to having things sent off for analysis, you know? Um, you know, so they won't release the results of these tests. I have to assume it's because the test does not support their lawsuit. Um, and that is certainly the case, that was certainly the case in Denmark. All the allegations, all the stories, reported in the New York Times, reported in CBS, NBC, and at the end of the day, the EPA, as, as, as uh, Craig Sartner so memorably says, you're telling me my water's safe and it's safe to drink? He goes, yes. You know, imagine you thought you had three types of uranium in your water, two of them weapons grade, <laughs> did I mention that? Uh, and someone come, came and told you, actually you don't, your water's safe. How would you react? You'd be delighted. 
That was not his reaction. And you'd have to ask, why is that not his reaction? And I think it's because it ended his lawsuit. And um, but that's just my assumption. I can't think of any other reasonable explanation. So unless anyone has any other compelling questions, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, this gen okay, this gentleman here. Quick question. I have a bunch of comments that uh, they, originally they did have a problem with the water in Dimmick, which the, which the DEP did verify with uh, isotopic analysis, but they, they, they didn't shut down those three wells and clean up their act, and so they were able to clear up the problem, and it gradually goes away. So they, there was originally a problem, but it, apparently it went away. Yeah, yeah but... When you disturb the ground, when you disturb the ground, you have problems. I think Ron White told me, when his neighbor drilled a well, their water was disturbed for a while. When you disturb the ground, your water will be disturbed. I don't know, my water comes out of a tap. I don't even know where my water comes from, right? You know, I know people here have, it comes out of wells. So when somebody drills down, it disturbed Ron White's well. He told me that for a few days. But, you know, the, the DEP now says, and that, the quote is there in, in the film, they have no evidence of fracking ever having contaminated water. But they do so, have evidence so, that gas drilling so, has contaminated water. There's no evidence that fracking ever DEP has water. evidence. And, DEP know, has documents, and we have them. Quite, uh, gas drilling has contaminated water. water. Uh, DEP so, has decided. I want to thank you all. And you coming. ignore it. You ignore it. Oh, don't forget to buy the DVD. Frack Nation that was so great, Helen. So why do you like Frack Nation so much? Why do you think it's good? I wish I had a smartphone. <laughs> 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 
So why do you like Frack Nation? Why do you think it's good? I'm going that way. Josh, I'm going this way. Well, glad you're back up here. And so am I. Oh, maybe not again. Yeah. At least, you know, for the next year, the chief holds on to us. So why do you guys get out of here? That's including the increase because I think we're bringing two more on this year. Are you? And then two more on next year. So I think, again, I don't know. Two of ours or do you know? Patterson? Yeah. That's our, that's our, we have the most Patterson, so. Yeah, yeah. What's the one, there's one down here that's. So what did you think was good about Frack Nation, Scott? After the movie. Oh. I just thought it was a journalist. It's like Fal Phelan said, he's a journalist and he questions things, and I thought he very effectively questioned it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, as a journalist, that's what you do. You question things, I guess. And mm -hmm. he's a good you didn't think it was all one-sided and biased, every, nothing bad about the industry, but uh, everything bad about those who are protesting and making I, them look silly? No, I think, I but think, the industry, there was no problem at all? No, I think the movie Frack Nation was more about uh, him looking at the facts that had been presented in another venue and, you know, just questioning them and trying to track down whether there was another viewpoint to Gasland. And, you know, as a journalist, that's what journalists do. So you have no uh, qualms about it at all? No. No criticism? That was my criticism. Oh. Thank you, Scott. Sure. Hey. I here early I was feeling up pretty good. I figured let the other people see. No, we got home like at 6 o'clock, and I ran in, changed my clothes, and jumped in the car. Did you go on a bike today? No, it was Jordan. Jordan was out of What about the investigation, Shelley, on your property from the DEP? They still haven't made a decision on your bad casing and your spills, all your violations. What do you say about the DEP? <laughs> DEP violations. Yeah, I just talked to Shelly. I asked her, I said, what about your violations? Uh, you're still under investigation. Right. Why do you still have violations on your gas wells, bad casing and spills? Right. No answer. Of course. So, <laughs> the issue is, there's problems, and you can't hide from it. To say that there is none, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. It's like you're going to buy a piece of paper. This thing is perfect. It was only driven by my grandma to church. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, you How is the DEP under uh, under the new administration? Is it as good as it was under Randall? No. Is it worse? Is it oh. worse than under Randall? Prancer's quitting on April 15th. He's our current <laughs> current DEP. Check to see if it's true. I'm going to ask you where that's from. Shelly DePew has violations on her gas site, uh, DEP violations for bad cases. She's under investigation for 15 months. Did you know that? Is she upset? No, but she's under investigation. But meanwhile, she says she's she's under investigation. the gas wells on her property okay. are under investigation with the DEP for 15 months now. Okay. And they have bad cases.
casing issues and spill issues. And they're under investigation for the possible contamination also of Franklin Forks. Why doesn't she mention that? There are problems that the DEP has not resolved with her gas wells yet. Are you familiar well, you with those what, problems? Though, Vera, sometimes things take some time to get resolved. But are you, are you familiar with the... No, you know what, Vera? I'm not familiar with every problem. Okay, I'm just it wondering. Happens around well, I'm just letting you know about Shelly DePue, yeah. who, who starred in Truthland. Yeah. And who lives near us. She's five miles from me. You know what, Vera? I told you that this is not without risk. It is not without risk. But oh, those just risks letting you know are manageable about this and able to be mitigated. Well, if it's so manageable, she's still under investigation for 15 months. Is that on? Yeah. Now it's on. Uh, goodbye, Vera. All right, goodbye. Get a release What's, from me before you... No, this is a public, public venue, just like... What's his name, fellow? All right. Films all Just of us with no release. And don't touch. Okay. Just take it out of my face. All right. Shelley Depew, tell us about your violations, the DEP violations that you don't talk about on your property. To be more hey, Shelly, you want to guarantee it, and we get to put a gun to your head if one bad job left the top. Quite New York will never go. Cuomo will never let one well. So if one well gets put to the ground, anything happens, he can kiss 2014 goodbye, kiss 2016 goodbye, and be president. He's so you do have a side. The reason is that's interesting. They are. That's very. You can show drill, baby drill. We, I say we, state of Pennsylvania. Sure, you, sure you can show this. You can show this movie. That's why it's being shown. Right there, their royalties, all of the royalties are drawn out 80%. Ron and Teal, you know, they're over there. They were getting what about your violations, uh, Shelley? When are they going to decide whether your wells have contaminated Franklin Forks? Come and visit the people who are having to get water. Do you care?